There isn't much about late Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain that hasn't been said or expressed. Since his apparent suicide in 1994, much of his life has been on display, allowing for newer generations to discover the very much admired Cobain's rebellious spirit of youth, including his disdain for the overwhelming adoration and success garnered during the band's short tenure, with Kurt being labeled the voice of a generation. Kurt's tales of youthful isolation translated remarkably with 1991's hit Smells Like Teen Spirit and sonically transformed the direction of contemporary rock. 2015's American documentary Montage of Heck depicts beautifully illustrated animations visualizing Kurt's childhood, along with snippets of Cobain's voice narration. It's an astounding inside look through the mind of a musical genius. Cobain's character is often misconstrued, naturally an introvert and faced with complexities during his adolescent years, duality would always play a role once Cobain was thrust into a world of superstardom. His offstage persona could vary depending on who you ask, but with a consensus agreeing he could be shy and reserved in public. We'd like to share with you guys a story submitted by a subscriber of our channel and his one-time encounter with Nirvana in 1991. This fan's interaction story comes from Oliver Martin from Brisbane, Australia. A special thanks and shout out go to Oliver for sharing this story with us all. Please enjoy and be sure to leave your comments below and share with us your Nirvana stories and favorite moments. This is Anakin with Rat Pack Matinee. See you guys soon. It's a bit of a blur nowadays. You know, over 25 years later, and I still remember that late December evening in 1991. Uh, as, if, as if it was just last year. I was shy and quiet as a young bloke, uh, the only child of parents who never married and couldn't stand each other. Mum and I stayed in Brisbane while Dad migrated over to America for work and eventually settled in Arizona after meeting uh, his then-girlfriend, now wife, of over 17 years. In typical fashion, I was shipped off to the States on holiday with Dad during Christmas, which was uh, always eventful. Mum and I didn't really celebrate Christmas, I'm ashamed to admit, but we were barely making ends meet. America was always a fantastic getaway, inspiring my young imagination. I never wanted to return home. Dad had a mate named Felix, with two sons, Derek and Cyrus, around my age, who lived across the way. <laughs> they were interesting blokes, especially their taste for the musical arts. Anyway, I was set to return to Brisbane that following Monday, and they invited me out that night along with, uh, with a handful of their mates. I left a word for Dad I'd be out for the evening, though I had no idea where they'd be taking me. Uh, wanting to fit in and not complain, I just, uh, I just went along with the program. We must have smoked uh, about five joints <laughs> in, in an exquisite cipher. Then we all piled into Derek's station wagon and headed downtown. Uh, we ended up at Arizona State University, and the atmosphere was contagious, you know, just full of energy. There was a huge concert going on with Red Hot Chili Peppers headlining the show. Grunge and punk, rock and roll had never been my cup of tea per se, but the group of blokes I was with all dressed as if they were in heavy metal bands themselves. And always feeling like an outcast, I quickly ruffled up my shirt a bit and ran my fingers through my hair to make it appear messy and wild. We didn't even have tickets for the show, and about $17 between the seven of us uh, of spending cash. Fortunately enough, uh, Cyrus had a friend working security that night and secured some backstage passes to meet some of the acts. It wasn't a few minutes before I saw Derek chatting it up with a bloke just a few feet from me. He looked up and gestured with a way for me to come join. I walked up and immediately reached out to shake the bloke's hand and he introduced himself as Dave. Yes, I've shaken hands with Dave Grohl and had no idea who he was at the time, but he seemed friendly and inviting. Just behind him was a gentleman sat on the floor with his legs crossed, uh, scribbling in a notepad. I particularly remember Cyrus being stoked to meet him. Cyrus proceeded with conversation, though not much reciprocation came from this gentleman. He wasn't ignoring him, and he did acknowledge Cyrus with an occasional head nod. And after a couple more minutes, uh, we were asked to move from the area and just remained in the parking lot until the end of the show. I asked Cyrus, who was the bloke you were chatting with, uh, one of your mates? He then remarked, dude, that was Kurt Cobain, bro. <laughs> Later that night at their home, I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit for the first time and recall my thoughts and emotions being expressed uh, with every lyric Kurt sang out. This began my deep dive into Nirvana's history and complete catalogue. 
Nirvana did tour Australia in 1992 just once, but my resources were too limited to even try to get to a show. And those fellas definitely helped shape the, the soundtrack of my formative teen years. My mate Cyrus passed away just last year, but Derek and I have remained close and, uh, and revisit the memories of that winter night every chance we get. Especially those long, gnarly ciphers we used to have. Yeah, those ciphers alone were legendary. <laughs> 